Hello, beautiful. Nikki here from Crazy Simple Truth. And hey, I promised you yesterday that you were going to get a video today where we are going to go step by step through this Bible study process for beginners or for whoever wants to shake up their Bible study a little bit. I think it will give you some new ideas that I had never really looked at before. And so if you didn't see yesterday's video and you want to check that out, I will try to remember to link it in the description box. If not, all you do on my channel is click my picture icon and you um, click it. It will take you to my YouTube page and then you will click playlists or videos. If you click videos, you'll see what yesterday's was. If you go to playlists, you'll get all kinds of cool things about um, Bible study tips, Bible study supplies, Bible journaling, all kinds of fun stuff in there that you can use um, for your Bible study time. Okay, so we're going to dig right in. And I think what I'm going to do, since I suggested in yesterday's video, actually it was last week's beginner tip video, where I said to start in one of the Gospels, because if you are a Christ-following Christian, you want to know as much as you can about Christ. And in order to do that, we need to read the Gospels. And so that is in the New Testament, you're going to have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So I thought, hey, we will just start in Matthew. So that's what we're going to do. And we are not going to do chapter one. Um, well, let me take that back. We are going to do chapter one, but we're not going to do the first 16 verses because 17 verses, because they're talking about Jesus's ancestry, which is very important, but won't be interesting for this Bible study. So we are going to start on verse 18, and we're going to go through verse 25. So if you remember yesterday, we talked about the fact that this is a passage. What is a Bible passage? A noun, a portion or section of written work, a paragraph, verse, etc. So our passage is going to be Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 24. So if you're a brand new beginner at this, you can see where this is the book of Matthew. This is chapter 1. And then you go here and you'll see verses 18 through 24. And that's what we are going to study today. So we're going to start out by reading this. We need to start out by praying. So we're going to do that. Um, well, I'm going to let you pause it, actually. And I'm going to let you pray with our little, let me move this. these flowers. I'm going to let you use this and pray before we read this. So go ahead and pause that and fill out this part of the worksheet. If you don't have a printer, just grab a piece of paper. It works just fine. So pause. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, my dog's going to freak out and bark at somebody. She's outside. It's supposedly the hottest day of the year here. It's pretty hot. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read this. This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. So that is so awesome. So we're going to go ahead and use that as our passage. So if you want to go ahead and move on to the next part of this, we are going to write down the book is Matthew. So we're going to write Matthew. I forgot to put my microphone on. I'm wondering if I should do that. Matthew chapter 1, and then it's going to be verses 18 through 24. I'm trying to talk loud. I'm hoping you have good sound. Okay. Oh, I did that totally wrong. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 24. Whatever. It works. 
Okay, observe the details. Background of the book in this passage. So who is the author? So this is not my study Bible. Um, I do suggest, hang on, let me grab it. This is the study Bible that I suggest you get um, if you don't have one. This is the Life Application Study Bible. There is a link below. I also use the Quest Study Bible, and um, that's a good one, too. This is my newer one, and I really, really love it. So if you open up the New Testament to Matthew, you will see there's an entire page, two pages, actually, that are devoted to the book of Matthew and tell you all about it. Now, this Bible that I was reading from, my ESV um, devotional Bible, is in the description box too. And this one gives you some information on Matthew too. It's not a study Bible, so it's not going to have as much information, but it will give you the basics, which is what you need. But we're going to go ahead and use this one because the study Bible, I think if you're new to Bible journaling, even if you're not, if you don't own a study Bible, you need one. And if you don't have the money for one, then just use free apps because those work too. You can Google things. Just make sure you're looking at a, um, reputable site. So BibleStudyTools.com, BibleHub.com. Um, no, one of them's .org. I can't remember, but BibleStudyTools.org maybe. I don't know. Anyway, those will work too, but I suggest you have this. I suggest that you have your hands on something. So this is going to tell us, the author's Matthew. His name is Levi. He was writing to the Jews. Here's the date it was written. And then it gives you some other information about the book of Matthew. So we're going to take that information and we're going to write the author. So the author is Matthew. The audience is the Jews. It's in the New Testament. So we abbreviate the New Testament NT. And it was written approximately A.D. 60 to 65. A.D. 60 to 65. Okay, so now we know that. We're observing the details. So we've got our G and grow, go to God in prayer. R and grow, read a passage. O, observe the details. So we've got that. Now this observe section, if you remember from yesterday, is really hefty. There's all kinds of things in here that you can do um, in this packet, in the observe step, because if you don't get all the details that you need when you're observing, then you're not going to be able to properly apply it to your life. And that is the ultimate goal. That's the most important thing. So even though the most important thing is applying it, if you miss this step, if you don't thoroughly observe what you're reading, then you're not going to be able to apply it properly. Now, these steps aren't necessarily the way that you have to study it or observe it, but these are some really good tips that I got from my Dancing in the Desert um, Bible. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. That was the video I did yesterday. No, these tips I came up with from a variety of places, and I can't remember where... One of them was a book that I had. Anyway, I took a variety of different things and made it my own is what I did. So um, these aren't what you have to do, but I think these are really, really helpful. Okay, so you need to know the literary form of the book. Okay, Matthew is a history book, and that is written here. So here's Matthew. So it says you can circle one. I'm going to just go ahead and use my new highlighter here, and I'm going to highlight Matthew. Ooh, those are bright. And then um, emphasis of topic. How many verses and chapters before and after your passage have the same topic? Okay, I'm going to go back to my regular Bible so you guys can see it easier. It doesn't have all the notes like the study Bible does, which the, is great, but just for sake for you guys to see. Um, how many verses and chapters? So, of course, the chapter before is ultimately about Jesus because it says Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Okay, so that is all about Jesus. And here is about Jesus being born. So everything is about Jesus. So we're just going to put, you don't have to count. Um, the entire book is about Jesus. So I'm just going to put the entire book. And sometimes if you really want to study thoroughly, the best thing to do is read the entire book and then go in and focus on a passage or a chapter or a few verses. What words or phrases are repeated 
within your passage. So Jesus, Messiah, born. Let's just go ahead and highlight as we go. Now, I highlight with no particular thing in mind. I have done some videos where you could use some um, particular ways of doing it, but I just like to just do whatever I think looks interesting. So Jesus was born. Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged. So I'm going to put Mary was engaged. But before the marriage took place, she became pregnant. So I'm just sort of recapping here. She became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'll go ahead and put that. And then Joseph, to whom she engaged, whom she was engaged, was a righteous man. So Joseph was a righteous man, did not want to disgrace her. He decided to break the engagement quietly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that. Ooh, these are pretty. These are new. If you didn't see my video this week where I uh, showed you these, these are really pretty. And they have like a liquid highlighter in them, which I think is cool. Okay, um, I'm sure they bleed through, which doesn't bother me. Oh, well, you can't really see it on here, but I'm sure they bleed through. I don't mind the bleed through because I'm highlighting on the other page normally anyway. So the bleed through doesn't bother me, but it may bother you. I don't know if it does or not, but it doesn't bother me. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord. Okay, so angel of the Lord. I'm going to highlight that. Appeared. And then I think I'll get a new color because the angel's talking. Joseph, son of David. Now, how is Joseph the son of David? I, right here, if you go over here. So I'm actually going to highlight this. Um, Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father. I'm going to highlight this whole little section here. David. David was the father of Solomon. Okay, so this is how we know. This is how we know this. Okay, this goes here. And then it goes all the way down. That's why if you read this, this was important because you're realizing that um, Jacob was the father of Joseph. Okay, so let's go down just a bit. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Okay, so Joseph's, Joseph comes from the line of David. So that's how we know that. Joseph, son of David. And King David was very important in biblical history. So that's why um, I highlighted that. Don't worry if you didn't know that. But if you have a study Bible, I'm sure it would explain that to you. Um, the angel said, do not be afraid. So the angel's still talking. Angels always say, do not be afraid, which is interesting. Take Mary as your wife. The child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will save his people. Um, and then I'm going to get a new color. All of this occurred. This occurred to fulfill the Lord's message. And then this is the message, so I'm just going to make a little thing around it here. And then remember, there's no right or wrong way to highlight. If you're looking for a specific way, go ahead and go under my Bible study methods and see if you can find a video um, or Bible study supplies also has some highlighter videos, I think. Um, but I think I tell you how to do this one with the pens. So you may want to use that versus the highlighting. Completely up to you, but I'm just trying to make it really easy for beginners. So to be easy, just highlight whatever you want in whatever color you want, whatever stands out to you. There's no right or wrong. When Joseph woke up, okay, so Joseph woke up because he was in a dream. Remember here? Um, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. And then... Joseph named him Jesus. This one's really wet. Ooh, that's a lot of wetness coming out of there. That one definitely would bleed through. So I may not want to use that one again. I'm not sure why it got so wet compared to up there, but this isn't about pens. So let's keep going. What was the question? The question was, what words or phrases are repeated? Okay, so let's go in and see. Jesus is repeated. Um, pregnant, talking about Mary being pregnant is repeated. So let's grab my paper here. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and take these extra papers off of it so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to write here, um, Jesus. 
Joseph. These are names that are repeated, but they are important. Mary. Now let's see what else is repeated. Um, pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Conceived by the Holy Spirit. So the, that's in there twice. So pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And conceived by the Holy Spirit. Conceived. I'm doing this really sloppy and sideways. So sorry about that. Conceived by the Holy Spirit. See, that was important, right? Okay. He only said once Jesus, actually, so I guess I didn't need to. I can probably cross that one out. Not that he's not important, but it didn't really mention him other than that. Um, take Mary as your wife. Okay, stay. So what did it say about Mary? It said um, Mary was engaged. So Mary was engaged. And it also said take Mary as your wife. Take Mary as your wife. Okay, um, so that kind of gives us an idea. I don't see any other phrases that are particularly repeated. Um, it says, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. So Mary as your wife, I see that. And then I see, um, I don't really see anything else except that he took Mary as his wife. So that one's really important. Um, he said this three different times in this passage. It said that to keep Mary as your wife, take Mary as your wife. Okay, punctuation used in the pa passage. Circle the punctuation used in your Bible or write the passage out on paper. So this is why this is important. I'm only going to circle it if it's interesting. So, um, well, I don't know. Let's. I want to see if there's any semicolons first. Because that's when it gets um, interesting, I think. Also, exclamation marks make it interesting. I don't see anything here. There's quotations, so we know that the angel is talking. That's interesting, so I'll circle those. Um, the Lord's message. So I'm going to circle this. All right, I don't know. I guess I'll put a little arrow here. The Lord's message, the message is the Lord's. So I'm going to underline that because, okay. And then here, someone's talking. Who's talking? Well, the prophet. So I'm going to circle those. And then I'm going to do that the prophet was talking. So I'm going to put another little arrow. Um, remember, there's no right or wrong here. This is just the way to, uh, that I'm doing it. Um, I don't see any exclamation marks or semicolons. No periods, just that we have some quotations of people talking. Oh, there's an exclamation mark. Two, look, the virgin will conceive a child. See, that's important. Important, important. Um, I would suggest what you could do to do this, the punctuation and things like that, is maybe just print it off from the computer or write it out on a piece of paper. And then that way you're not putting little circles in your Bible because it, it kind of is hard to do in that tiny of a little spot. But we got, we worked it out, girl. We worked it out. Okay, relationship between ideas. Cause and effect words found in the passage. So we are going to look for sneaky little words that have big meaning. Like if, then, but, therefore, because. So um, this is how. But, okay, so there's a but. While she was still a virgin. Okay, what words am I looking for? If, then, but, therefore, because, etc. Looking for and. Is a righteous man. So he decided, okay, as he considered this. So as is one of those words. Because what while he's thinking about this, this is what happened. Okay, Joseph, son of David, for the child. Uh, let's see. I wish you guys could talk to me and tell me if you see anything else. Oh, you know what? Here's a colon, too, that I didn't circle. Um, and that shows us that this is what the prophet was saying. And then, actually, I meant to tell you, a lot of times there's footnotes in your Bible. If you have a good study Bible, it will tell you exactly who said that. But sometimes there's little footnotes down here that will tell you who they are referring to or what verses. And here it says Isaiah 7, 14, Isaiah 8, 8, and Isaiah 10. Uh, 
I think I covered that one, but it tells you who the prophet is. So Isaiah was the one talking. Um, now let's go back and look for when Joseph woke up. He did, but, but that's important. He did not have sexual relationships with her until her son was born and Joseph named him Jesus. So this is an and. Okay, so we're getting those sneaky little words. So we're going to put in but before. Okay, so I guess I got to do it here so you can see it. But, comma, before the marriage took place. The marriage took place. So messy. Sorry about that. Okay, Um, the next one is as he considered this. So I'm just going to put little dots here. As he considered this, and now we're going to go in parentheses. We are going to put, what is he considering? What is he considering? He's considering that he didn't, he was going to break the engagement quietly. Break engagement. He didn't want to disgrace her quietly. Okay, the next one was um, the word, but he did not have sexual relations. Okay, wait, wait, there was there was an as up here. Where did I see that? As he can say, no, I just did that one. She will have a son and you are to name him Jesus. He will save his people. All of this occurred um, when, here it is, when, when Joseph woke up. So these are kind of like time words. When Joseph woke up, okay, and then, but, so here's a but, but he didn't have sexual relations. He didn't, I hope you can see what I'm doing, yeah, you can, but he didn't have sexual relations okay um with her dot 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 until so there's another word her son was born her son was born and then we've got and so this is another this is an important extension of that and so when as but and until and Joseph named him Jesus. And Joseph named him Jesus. Okay, any questions asked with answers provided? And I don't think, I didn't see a question mark, so I would assume not. Um, any comparisons and contrasts between something or someone? And this one didn't have any comparisons or contrasts that I could see. You don't have to dig too deeply in it. If you don't think of it right away, then you, it's done. Move on. You don't have to get caught up on, ooh, I didn't fill out that box. It's okay. Just keep going. Recreate the scene of the passage. Who are the people? So we've got Joseph. We've got Mary. We've got the angel of the Lord. And even though the Holy Spirit wasn't there, he was discussed and Jesus was there when he was born. It talks about when he was born, Joseph named him Jesus. So what is happening? What's happening is Mary became pregnant, became pregnant. Ooh, that's really bad. By the Holy Spirit. Joseph wanted to break engagement. I mean, Joseph didn't believe that the Holy Spirit impregnated Mary until the angel came and spoke to him. And then he believed. In faith, he believed that. Joseph wanted to break engagement. Um, angel of the Lord. So I'm just going to put angel came to speak with Joseph. And tell him, whoops, him, I didn't mean to capitalize that, what 
to do. And then um, what happened next? Jesus, uh, Joseph did what he was told is what I'm going to put. Okay, where is the story taking place? So it doesn't tell us where it's taking place. I mean, we know because um, of the story of Jesus' birth. We know that. But this particular passage does not tell us where it's taking place. All we know is that Joseph was sleeping. Um, so we don't know when Mary was engaged. We only know that Joseph was sleeping. So we don't know. I'm not going to put anything else. What time of day or season is it? Well, part of it was nighttime. Um, unknown. In, from this passage, it's unknown. Um, and then Joseph's dream was most likely at night. Most likely bedtime. I'm writing so sloppy. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. How will this affect your relationship and beliefs? Am I missing a page? No, I'm not. Okay, so what did we learn? How will this affect my relationship with God? So let's get this out of our way. And let's think about this pretty deeply here, okay? Let's think about what we learned. How will this affect my relationship with God? How's our, how's our relationship with God going to change after we read that? I would say that, whoops, God works mysteriously. God works mysteriously. And it doesn't always make sense. Make sense. But I will believe him. I will believe him and trust his plan. That's how it changed me. You write how it changed you and trust his plan. Because that's a big deal. That's a big deal. And that really did. That helped me realize, wait, you know, Joseph what could have been like completely appalled by the fact that Mary most likely slept with another man. I mean, he, he could have chose not to believe that message, but he believed it. And we need to believe God when crazy things happen and we, we feel that God is doing it for a reason. We have to trust his plan and believe him. Um, how will my relationship with others change? So that's a tricky one with this passage. Um, no, it's not. No, it's not. It just came to me. Here's how it will change. Um, believe the best in people. Believe the best in people. People don't assume. That's huge. Don't assume. And don't be unfair. Yeah, that actually, that really could change your relationship with others. Now, how will this change my relationship, views, and beliefs of myself? So what do I think about myself that that would change? So that one's tricky. Let me think for a minute. Um, what I want you to do is if you come up with something different on these, this particular page, I would love to have you put it in the comments because I would love to know all of your different opinions about how studying this passage changed you. So how will this change my relationship, views, and beliefs of myself? Okay, let me think for a moment. I think it would have a lot to do with, um, well, yeah, I kind of already put it. I will believe and trust in his plan. So here's my, here's my part of where this is going to go down here. Okay. Um, how will this change my response to the enemy's lies? So Joseph could have believed that Mary um, had sexual relationships, relationship with another man and got pregnant. Um, and he chose not to. So how could we respond to the enemy in that way? Um, we could say, I will believe God. I will believe God and his plan. Even when. It seems impossible. So you would you would deal with negative thoughts 
from yourself, from yourself and from the enemy, you would deal with that. No, I will believe God and his plan. I don't, I don't care how impossible this seems. I don't care how crazy this seems. I will believe. And so that's kind of your battle plan for the enemy. When those lies come in your own head or um, when you feel the enemy, when you feel opposition against you, that's how you're going to battle that with that. So that was really actually really powerful. Like I did not realize that I would pull that much information out of this. Um, so here I'm going to let, this is your own personal thing, but this is where you're going to take what you learned and you're going to write a prayer to God. So you're going to write things like, um, how that changed you. You're going to kind of add more detail into this, um, about how you want to apply this to your life. And that is the important part here that you are reading the Bible, studying the Bible and living it out. So you're changing your life and then in turn changing the life of the people around you, the lives of the people around you. So I hope this was helpful. It really was super, super insightful to me. I just wrote it. I, I actually have never studied this um, particular, some of these steps. I've done the grow method, but some of these steps are brand new to me, looking at uh, cause and effect, looking at the punctuation. Um, some of those things, the Holy Spirit just came up with the other day when I made this. And so I feel like it definitely was somewhere he wanted me to go with that. And um, it did help me. It did help me learn a lot. And so some of this, like I said, I, I've already done the grow method before, but I didn't have all those details. So this was great. I really love it. And I definitely am going to be doing more. So make sure you watch. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do and click the gray notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And make sure you comment so I know how you're going to apply this to your life. What changed in you, your view of God, your view of others, your view of yourself, your view of the enemy's lies. What changed in you because of studying this passage? Let me know and I will see you later. You are beautiful. God loves you so much. Bye.